gone this year. Memories of happiness and bitter tears. Through it all, there was a common dread that cannot be ignored. You were there teaching me to be your servant. For the sake of our visitors, let me say a short introduction to our preacher. Our preacher is a professor in the School of Theology of Northern Luzon Adventist College, teaching church history and historical theology. At the same time, one of the elders of NLAC Church. Let me now, let me call him Pastor Christopher Luaya.
morning and happy Sabbath. Thank you, Pastor Dumukmat, for that very short introduction for a very short man. <laughs> Thank you also, Ms. Trono and Ms. Arisgado, for that song. I ask the title is All Alone. And that was rendered so nicely that uh, I don't understand myself anymore after uh, the song was rendered. If I can still speak uh, as what I planned, but that was a, a nice song. I saw people, uh, visitors, many, we have many visitors today. Maybe it's because it's a long weekend. People from here will be going, was, were going out. And people from far away are here with us. We have a long weekend, but we also have a long week with us. Considering that we have two friends buried this week. So, that uh, made us very busy for this week, but Praise the Lord, we are gathered to worship God. Despite our situations for this week, but worshiping God is not hindered. We are gathered here to worship Him. I was uh, thinking of uh, going directly to my sermon but Miko and Crystal will not allow me to proceed with my sermon without singing that song they keep on reminding me throughout this week will you play that song I told them I, I'll think about it but at last, I decided to play it. But before we play that song, I would like to invite everyone to open your Bibles in Luke 24, verses 13 to 15. I realized that I need to proceed to verses 14 and 15, not only verse 13. But in the screen, you can only find verse 13. But we will proceed, we will continue to verses 14 and 15. I'm reading from New International Version. See here, on the first day of the week, very early in the morning, the women took the spices they had prepared and went to the tomb. That's, that's verse 1. Okay, let's proceed to 13. Now that, that same day, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus. Americans pronounce this as Emmaus. About seven miles from Jerusalem. They were talking with each other about everything that had happened. As they talked and discussed these things with each other, Jesus himself came up and walked along with them. Verse 16, I'll, I'll include verse 16, but they were kept from recognizing him. So with that key text that we will base our sermon for today, before we pray, we will sing this song. Well, 
will sing this song. sing there is sound with God's own heart oh let the ancient words impart words of life words of hope give us strength help us go in this world wherein we roam ancient words will guide us on ancient words ever true changing me and changing you we have come with open hearts oh let the ancient words Loving Heavenly Father, we come unto you once again this uh, moment. Lord, this day is so secret. We are before you, a very holy God, before us. Lord, please help us to understand your message for us today. Please help us to be prepared for your message. Please open our hearts and open our minds. Help us to be receptive today, Lord. Thank you for blessing us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Okay? Estimated of 1.2 billion Roman Catholics in the world today. According to the Vatican figure. And more than 40% of the world's Catholics lie in Latin America, but Africa has seen the biggest growth in Catholic congregations in recent years. The Roman Catholics, along with Eastern churches like Eastern Orthodox, Eastern Catholic, Eastern Lutheran traditions are celebrating today what they call Holy Week. And my time to preach is so timing with the event for this week. You know, Seventh-day Adventism has been blessed with this Holy Week celebration for one reason. And that is a long weekend. Right? We enjoyed the long weekend. And at least I had the time to prepare for my sermon for today. The Holy Week is not in the Bible. It's the Holy Weekend. It's there. <laughs> okay? And perhaps that's the reason why Adventists do not celebrate this uh, Holy Week celebration. We find in the Bible Holy Weekend. Why Holy Weekend? Friday, the crucifixion day, Sabbath, burial, and Sunday, the first day of the week, is the resurrection day. Okay? So, but sad to say, sad to know, that there are people in their own midst, in Adventism, that, that teach uh, some kind of uh, doctrine that does not fit with the theology of Adventism. Take for example, the teaching of a Wednesday resurrection and a Sabbath morning, a Wednesday crucifixion and a Sabbath morning resurrection. You know, for Catholicism, as far as history is concerned, those people who will be teaching another doctrine other than the teaching of the Catholic Church, they call, uh, the Catholic Church calls it anathema. What is, what is an anathema? It's an excommunication. Perhaps in our context, it is uh, expressed through uh, a discipline, excommunicated, something like that. So my sermon for today is entitled, Can't You See? It centers on the story of the road to Emmaus, or Emmaus. What's the story in this particular passage of Luke 24, verses 13 to 35? As we read the context, the background of this passage, that was Easter Sunday, as most Christians call it Easter Sunday. The biblical name for this is the Resurrection Day. That is Sunday in our calendar, the first day of the week. We can find it in Luke 24, verse 1. On a seven-mile walk to Emmaus, seven miles was 11 kilometers away from Jerusalem. Okay, seven miles or eleven kilometers walk to Emmaus. Christ did three great things to the to the two disciples, which he can also do with us today. Okay, try to read the whole the whole chapter, the whole unit of uh, Luke twenty four thirteen to thirty five. Okay, you can find. Lessons 
that Jesus did to his two disciples that he can also do with us at this time. Number one lesson that I learned while reading is Christ can walk with you. Try to take note of this uh, points that I'll be sharing with you today. Maybe you realize, you realize it before, but you have not uh, written it in your, in your list. Number one point that I want to share is Christ can walk with you. That was the same day. When we say the same day, that was the, the day when Jesus was resurrected. Okay? And two of the disciples talked with each other about everything that had happened. You know, the context was about the time of the resurrection. Okay? Jesus was resurrected that day. Okay? It was the resurrection of Jesus. They wondered when they did not find the body of Jesus. They were not able to find Christ's body in the tomb. So, when the two angels told them that Christ is not here, He has risen, do you know what happened? When the women told the things to the eleven disciples and to the others, other disciples, that they saw that the stone rolled away from the tomb, and they did not find Jesus there. What happened? They did not believe the report. Because according to the chapter, it seemed to them like nonsense. Okay, the word that the Bible used in there is nonsense. For them, the resurrection was a nonsense. Okay? The two disciples, this, these two disciples were not belong to the eleven. But in, the, in Luke 24 verse 9, there are other disciples that are not belong to the eleven, but they are referred to the others. Okay? Other disciples. They were not belong to, to the eleven. And these two disciples could not grasp the idea that the Son of Man must be delivered over the hands of sinners, be crucified, and on the third day be raised again. That was inconceivable for the disciples to understand. The very reason why they could not comprehend such words of the Bible is because of their preconceived ideas about the Messiah. They all already have their, their uh, biases there in their minds. Even though how many times Jesus told them about his faith, that he would be crucified, he will be buried, and on the third day, he will be resurrected, that was unfathomable. The dying Messiah would not fit their theology. Because they believe that the Messiah that would come would literally free them from the, from the Roman bondage. So that was inconceivable. We cannot understand that. He will be he will be dead, he will be resurrected. That's nonsense. According to the record. And Jesus was not able to fulfill for for he died. That Messiah, that that's that that Christ who claimed to be the Messiah, but dead at this time. According to the theology, according to the preconceived ideas, that Messiah does not fit. 
He will be he will be resurrected on the third day. That's nonsense. Something unfathomable, inconceivable in the minds of the disciples. A seven walk to Emmaus was something. Seven mile walk, eleven kilometers walk was something. Can you imagine eleven kilometers here to to somewhere? It is almost Binalunan, right? Okay, I think Binalunan from here is 19 kilometers. So 11 kilometers must be before Binalunan. It will be beyond Pusurubio. And that was the walk of the two disciples with Jesus. It was something. Can you imagine the distance? And Jesus walks with his disciple in times of uncertainty. Can you get the point? Jesus walked with his disciples in times of uncertainty. Something was unclear. So something should be explained. Can't you see the, the patience there? Jesus' patience with his disciples is incomparable. Because Jesus did not say, Oh, I was already with you for three years. And you, until now, you, you cannot understand what, what I mean. I was already with you for, for three and a half years. So, you're so hard-headed. You don't understand. So it's up to you. Go away. Christ did not say that. But Jesus walked with them for an extra 11 kilometers. Can't you see God's patience there? Maybe this is for, for teachers, for students. Teachers will say, I, I was with you for for four years and until now you have not yet understood my teaching Milton will be here for another six years because he's doing masteral now <laughs> and still you don't understand so it's not my fault it's yours now But Jesus extended uh, an 11 kilometer walk with his disciples. God's patience. God is so patient that he extended for another miles. Another miles. How many miles? Not only an extra mile, but another seven extra miles. In order for them to understand that nonsense. Nonsense? Oh brother, I am your teacher. You are talking nonsense now. I think I need to, to extend another 11 years with you. <laughs> we are always told of doing extra mile, right? For our fellow men. Here is one, one uh, quotation. Go to Go the extra mile, it's never crowded. It took me time to understand why it, never, it is never crowded. There are no traffic jams on the extra mile. Is that true? But Jesus 
To tell you, my, my brothers and sisters, Jesus is not a fan of an extra mile. He is a fan for another seven extra miles. For an extra mile is only one mile. And he can even go beyond seven extra miles. If ever, if it is never crowded or no traffic jam with an extra mile, how much more with another seven miles? No traffic jams, never crowded. It's because few people do it. How is this with you? Have you recognized that God works with you when things appear uncertain? Have you realized that He is so patient that He will not allow you to end up miserable? If Jesus walked along with them so He can walk with us too, not just an extra mile but for another seven miles. Second point that I want to share, I thought I, I had a time. But it's almost 12 o'clock, but you cannot afford to go home without finishing this sermon. Christ can talk with you. After Jesus joined the walk with them, he also started talking with them. He says, what are you discussing together as you walk along. The two were busy discussing together that they did, did not mind someone was with them. Okay? They were not able to recognize that someone. Who was that someone? Sometimes, when we are occupied with problems, with uncertainties, when we are focused on our personal concerns, what happened? Jesus might be unnoticeable. In the Bible, it is clear that it was God who initiated talking to Adam and Eve after the fall. Okay? God talked to them about how they could be forgiven. In fact, throughout the Bible, throughout the Bible, God's message cannot go away from forgiveness. These foolish disciples, the Bible calls it foolish disciples, who are slow of heart to believe that the prophets have spoken not only need God's patience, these disciples also needed forgiveness. God's patience, they also needed God's message, I mean. What was Jesus' way of telling them concerning himself. The Bible says in verses 25 to 27, and beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he explained to them what was said in all the scriptures about concerning himself. See, Jesus brought them back to all the scriptures. He did not say, I'm here, no need for the Bible. Discard that. The Messiah is already here. But Jesus went back to what was previously written concerning himself. So that's why it's hard to invent doctrines out of what is previously written. And many people are doing that. God talks to us through the Bible. If you want to listen to Jesus' voice, Jesus always brings us to the Bible. In fact, 
in John 5 verse 39, what does the text say? You study the scriptures diligently because you think that you have eternal life in them. These are the very scriptures that testify about me, according to him. Jesus talks to them about the Messiah who brought forgiveness. The wrong perceptions about the Messiah will be forgiven as long as they listen to his voice written in the Bible. In fact, when God forgives, what? What's next? When he forgives, he what? He forgets. Do you find it hard to forgive and to forget? Sometimes for many people, it's hard. But that's the way God forgives. When He forgives, He forgets. In Isaiah 43, verse 25, I, even I, am he who blots out your transgressions for my own sake and remembers your sins no more. Because this is a precaution for each one of us. Because of those people who claim to forgive but cannot forget. They are so dangerous to the extent that they still want to ruin your life. God is telling them that He could forgive them of the wrong notions as long as they go back to the Scriptures. God's voice in the Bible can bring us into genuine forgiveness with everyone. This should teach us to be forgiving also. Allow me to say this, that the devil cannot forgive. I'm referring to, to the devil. The devil cannot forgive. That is a fact, that the devil cannot forgive. Another fact is that sometimes we have been unforgiving. Two facts we have today. One fact is the devil cannot forgive. The second fact is that sometimes we have been unforgiving. I've been sharing this quotation from Mahatma Gandhi. I'm always telling this that I don't believe all the, the things that Mahatma Gandhi says. But it's up to you if you believe this or not. According to him, the weak can never forgive. Forgiveness is the attribute of the strong. From anonymous author, you'll never know how strong your heart is until you learn to forgive who broke it. Holding a grudge from Davis Willis in his book, The Seven Laws of Love. He said, Holding a grudge does not make you strong. It makes you bitter. Forgiving doesn't, ma doesn't make you weak. It sets you free. It's up to you. If you believe those quotations. I hope that I am not too hard or too harsh. Even Jesus expressed the way I expressed, I expressed this, this morning. What did Jesus say to his disciples? John 6, verse 7, 7, 70. 
if I am quoting the right Bible text. According to him, yet one of you is a devil. Wow. One of you is a devil. In another instance, he also says, you belong to your father, the devil. And you want to carry out your father's desire. In John 8 verse 44. And in the same text, what makes him the devil? Because he is a liar and the father of all lies. What makes him the devil? Liar and the father of all lies. Psalm 34, verse 13. Let us be careful with our tongues. Because keep your tongue from evil and your lips from li telling lies. So that's why those who are unforgiving are also liars. God forbid. The last point that I want to share. Christ can walk with you. Christ can talk with you. And Christ can stay with you. After the long walk and discussion, as they approached Emmaus, Jesus acted as if he were going further. Okay? As if he were going further. But they urged them, he urged them, strongly saying, Stay with us. For it is nearly evening, the day is the day almost over. So he went in to stay with them. Stay with us. So he went in to stay with them. This is a very important point that we can find it here. Jesus will only stay. Take note of this, brothers and sisters. Jesus will only stay if he is invited to stay. Amen? Jesus will only stay unless invited to stay. When he stays, what happens? He resides in our hearts. That's what happened when he will stay. He resides in our hearts. And what happens if He will reside in our hearts? Okay? If Jesus stays in our hearts, what happens? It is simply accepting His way of living. Accepting His way of living, loving, and leading our lives. In that way, we also live a life like Christ. Love our fellow man, fellow men like Christ and lead others like Christ. I want to make this appeal to each one of us today. Do not go home without having this commitment in, you, in your minds, in your hearts. I would request uh, Sister Alondra and Brother Samuel to come. They will render a song today. And please listen to the song.
very related to the message that I have today, that God has today. I'm now giving them the time. Bread and pour the wine. Let I. Know 
I want to pray with you today as uh, part of our commitment. like to request each one to please rise. I want to to pray while we are standing. And before I, I'll pray, I would like to make this this appeal. Three appeals that I want to say. And if you feel that you want to commit yourself in answer to this appeal, I would like to I would like you to make a step in each of the appeal. Meaning, if I'll have three appeals, you will do three steps forward. If in case you want to make this commitment. Number one, will you allow Jesus to walk with you? Be reminded that He is sufficient that he still wants to do an extra seven mile with you. God is a God of extra miles. Thank you very much for that response. Second, will you allow him to talk with you? Thank you for your steps. He will no longer be speaking to you face to face now. He will talk to you through the scriptures. Jesus will not allow you to do this extreme. To do the unbiblical way of forgiveness that is forgiving without forgetting. This is not the biblical way. That is the way the enemy of the souls is doing. One last appeal. Third one. Will you request him to stay with you? I tell you, he will not teach you how to live. He will teach you how to live a life like him. He will teach you to love your fellow men like him, the way he is doing. And He leads you, He will teach you to lead others like the way He's doing. Shall we pray? Loving Father, the author and the finisher of our faith, the most gracious, the most loving, the most patient in the universe. Lord, we thank you for this opportunity of hearing your message today. Lord, please walk with us. And thank you for that expression of patience please Lord talk with us teach us about the Messiah teach us to go to the Bible teach us to go to the forgiveness the biblical way and Lord please stay with us Thank you 
that we have a God like you who will never forsake us who will always lead us and will always protect us thank you for your blessing loving Heavenly Father from now on tomorrow even beyond until you come all these things we pray in the loving name of Jesus Amen Thank you very much I hope and pray that you can now see God bless